everyone, I'm Chris Hernandez and this is the weekly report, a look at news from the city of Kansas City, Missouri. The city has launched a new partnership with a business in the Crossroads District that will increase the number of parking spots during popular weekend hours. Assurant Employee Benefit has agreed to share its employee parking lot at 20th and Grand. The lot will provide nearby businesses and their customers with 300 convenient parking spaces during peak entertainment hours. Previously, that private surface parking lot was used only during daytime hours. City staff will manage the lot. It is open to the public on Friday and Saturday nights from 5.30 p.m. through 2.30 a.m. The cost is $5 for non-event parking and $10 for event parking. Paying for municipal court fines is now easier thanks to a new time to pay plan. This new plan allows paying off fines in monthly installments after putting down 10% to start. The new plan is an example of how municipal court seeks to work with residents and how the court is continuing to build on the success of the paperless system it began using in 2011. The court will be able to automatically calculate payment schedules and efficiently generate mailings for the time to pay plan. Now let's check in with some of our city's departments. I'm Mark McHenry with Casey Parks and Recreation and uh, welcome to our uh, formal ribbon cutting dedication of these beautiful improvements to Hidden Valley Park. Uh, a little uh, context of history, uh, it was 25 months ago, actually on the 4th day of April of 2013, we stood at the top of the hill and we had a groundbreaking for this park. So, as we progressed, we've moved a little bit west, and we've dug a whole lot more than just a couple shovels we did on that morning, and really changed the landscape of, of this beautiful park. Uh, we have several folks that uh, are going to address you this afternoon, and I'm going to start out with uh, Mr. Dave Mecklenburg. Uh, Mr. Mecklenburg is a member of the Board of Parks and Recreation Commissioners, and also he is speaking today on behalf of the Northland Regional Chamber. Dave Mecklenburg. I'd like to thank the uh, staff uh, who works out here, who's going to be maintaining it. Uh, I think it's a tremendous asset to this area. It was something that was much needed in this part of Kansas City and Clay County. And with that being said, uh, I want to thank you all for being here today and just hope you can enjoy the park. The activity in here with people walking, sitting on the benches is going to keep the bad elements out of it. The strongest thing about a park in our system is when a community takes ownership. And I know that's going to happen here, so this is going to be a tremendous asset to the area. Thank you very much. It, it is gratifying to be here because for a time I didn't live too far away from here. And I can tell you, and you can just see the kids who are coming to, to, out to tell you how important of an amenity this park is and has become and will continue to be. Uh, the reality that Keith so eloquently pointed out over and over and over again about the thousands of people who moved in around here and who needed an amenity like this one, well, you can just see how right he was then and how wise of an investment that we have made now. Uh, not the least of which is on a cloudy day like this. I'm really glad we popped for a quarter million for the shelter, so I'm really <laughs> happy about that. Um, not that much. Move along. Yeah. <laughs> First of all, when I look at something like that, I have to think of my good friend uh, uh, Keith Nelson and what he's done. And what did he do? He became an advocate for this community, and he came to us not once, not twice, but four times to say we need more PIAC money for that park. And we accomplished it four years in a row. And not only did he come to us and ask for parks, he came to us and inspected as we went along, and if we made mistakes, he said, look at that. Help the staff correct mistakes before they get worse. So this is a real achievement. If every neighborhood had a Keith Nelson, this would be a great, great city. Thank you. My dad and his uh, business partner donated uh, this ground many, many years ago. And uh, he, he would be so proud to see this park in the condition that is today. He'd be even prouder to see the kids playing on the play, playground because this was a dream going back 60 years. Uh, but he had the vision to know that someday uh, this would be a beautiful place for a park. As we know, some of the most beautiful land in our, our whole, whole region is the bluff of overlooking Missouri River, and it needs to be preserved. And as this area has developed, 
it's great to have this size of a tract uh, that we can preserve for future generations. I don't know if Keith knows this or not, um, but uh, when we talk about Hidden Valley Park, uh, we say that Hidden Valley Park actually has a mayor. And uh, <laughs> the mayor of Hidden Valley Park, Keith Nelson. <laughs> We spend a lot of money trying to attract businesses to come to this town, yet sometimes we're a little shy in supporting businesses that come to this town. But you just think about the apartment complex to the east, over here to the west, and to the north. This park helps attract good neighbors. It's an asset now that helps those housing developments. We have four plexes down here the same way. It, it is something that when someone wants to move into your neighborhood, they want an asset like what we have here. So uh, as you know, there's a flying disc course within this park, and uh, so check it out. And uh, that's uh, a big addition. And then the rest of the park, uh, as far as improvement, it's kind of easy to see it all We're right here. We're seeing a shelter. We're seeing picnic tables. We're seeing barbecue grills. We're seeing a playground. A nice walking trail that's just a shade under a mile in duration. It's a lit trail, which is very nice. Uh, of course, a new parking lot that holds 24 plus cars, and that's well lit. So we have a little enclosure for the restroom, and you can take a break when you're up here. Uh, trash receptacles, a bridge, benches. So it's got all the key components to make for a successful park. And since it's been opened and being used by the communities, that's been proven time and time again. So, there again, thanks for, for coming up today. Uh, we're going to uh, cut a ribbon. And all the paparazzi ready? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> okay, on three. You will cut the ribbon. One, two, three. Got it. <laughs> oh, hey, I didn't mean to drop in on you, but now that I have you, let me and my friends teach you a thing or two about water conservation. You know, water is one of our most important resources. Even though the Earth is about 70% water, only 1% of it is accessible fresh water. That means my friends and I are more rare than you might think. We gotta do all we can to keep ourselves safe. I could tell you more stats about us, but I think it's better if I just show you what I mean. Let's go! Whoop! Here in the bathroom, a lot of us water drops sure get wasted. If you want to do all you can, install a new water-conserving toilet. A new water-conserving toilet uses half as much water as a conventional one and works just as well. Oop. If you can't get a low-flow toilet, try putting a large, filled plastic bottle in the tank. It forces the toilet to use less water when it flushes. The bathtub is where the most water is wasted. Try using the shower instead. Did you know an older shower head uses about five gallons of water per minute? That's just money going literally right down the drain. A new shower head uses half as much water and still gets you squeaky clean. In my house, we use water conserving shower heads and no lollygagging while you're in there. Shorter showers save both water and energy, so save the daydreaming for the breakfast table. Phew. There are a lot of little things that you can do around the house to help me out. Did you know that washing dishes by hand can take up to four times as much water as a dishwasher? That's way too much. The average dishwasher takes six gallons and Energy Star washers take only four. So fill those washers full and don't waste any of us drops. And when you do laundry, make sure it's a full load or select the proper water level. Many new washers have settings to help you use less water. So use them, whoop. When you need a drink, stay away from those plastic bottles of water. It takes 36 ounces of me to just make one plastic bottle. And sometimes the water inside is just tap water. Can you believe that? Oops. And don't forget about outside. I could use your help out here too. Lawn care can be more than half of your yearly water use. That's just too much. Water in the early morning or at night to avoid evaporation. That's just money disappearing into thin air. And I'd really like it if you'd get a rain barrel. The rain in the barrel can be used later to water plants, saving drops and money on your water bill. And drip irrigation is another good way to conserve water while watering plants. Whoop. If you just do some of the little things, it will make a huge difference. And my friends and I can stay around a little longer. Without smart water management, we could all be in real trouble. But with your help, everything will be right as rain. Get in touch with some of these folks to learn more.
Spay neuter KC will hold a pet vaccination clinic Saturday, June 27th at the Garrison Community Center, located at 1124 East 5th Street from 9 a.m. to noon. For just $30, your pet can receive a rabies shot, microchip, and pet license. Services for unaltered pets cost $40. Your pet must be at least four months old. But if you do have a puppy or kitten under four months of age, a $10 puppy or kitten vaccination or warmer will be offered. Spay or neuter vouchers will also be available. The city, in partnership with the Kansas City, Missouri Homesteading Authority, has launched a new Kansas City Home Ownership Initiative program. The program, established in KC, identifies homes that need some rehab work and helps first-time home buyers purchase those homes. After five years, homeowners may become eligible for up to $12,000 in approved financial reimbursements, which can be used for goals like paying off college loans. The first established in KC home available for purchase is located at 2626 Tracy Avenue in the Beacon Hill area. Applications and the application checklist are now available online at kcmo.org. Just enter EST KC in the search bar. The deadline for applications is June 30th. To watch this program again or to see any other Channel 2 video, visit our YouTube channel at youtube.com slash kcmoccio. That does it for this edition of the Weekly Report. I'm Chris Hernandez. Have a great week.